Hi friends, I'm Grishma and you're watching my channel G Tutorial. Today's class is on communication engineering for the CBT 2 of RRB J exam. If you like my video, please subscribe my channel for getting more RRB J related videos. Today I will be discussing analog communication and let us get to our class. First let us see what is meant by communication. Communication is a transformation of information from a source to a destination. The source is called transmitter and the destination is called receiver and the information is transmitted from source to destination through a path which is known as channel. The channel can be either wired channel or wireless channel. If there is a physical medium between the transmitter and receiver, such a channel is called as wired channel. Example of wired channel are coaxial cable, waveguide, optical fiber cable, etc. And wireless channel is a free space. Now let us see the basic block diagram of a wired channel. It involves the following blocks. First is the information source. Next is the source transducer. Then the channel. Then the receiving transducer. And finally the destination. Information source and source transducer forms the transmission section. And the receiving transducer and the destination forms the receiver section. Information source is a source that produces the required time varying signal that has to be transmitted. Or it is the source of information that is to be transmitted. And source transducer does the purpose of converting the signal, any physical signal which is produced by the information source to electrical signal. For example, uh, mic. Mic is an example for source transducer. The purpose of mic is it converts the sound signal produced to electrical signal. And it is transmitted. The electrical signal at the output of the source transducer, transducer is passing through the channel and it will be received at the receiver. And the receiver transducer converts this electrical signals back to the original form back to the in, in uh, back to the physical signal example for receiving transducer is loudspeaker loudspeaker converts electrical signals to sound signal and it is reached at the destination wired communication is mainly used for short distance communication so, uh, that is in, uh, in case if you are using it for large distance communication, there may be loss which is not affordable. So, usually wired communication is preferred for short distance communication. Next, let us see the block diagram of wireless communication system. Wireless communication system is mainly used for long distance communication. It involves the following blocks. The source section involves information source source transducer and modulator and the uh, so the signal is transmitted through free space the medium is free space and at the receiver the modulator demodulates the signal then it is sent to receiver transducer and finally to destination the information source does the same purpose as we have seen in the wired channel that is it produces information the source transducer converts the physical signal to electrical signal and the modulator is a new block which is which occurs only in wireless communication system. It is the modulator which converts the low frequency signal produced at the output of the source transducer to a higher frequency and that high frequency signal is transmitted. And at the receiver, uh, the original signal, the frequency the original signal with low frequency is demodulated from the received signal and then it is fed to receiver transducer which converts it to uh, the physical signal and finally it reaches the destination. This is what uh, that happened in a wireless communication system. Now we can see what how what is the necessity of a modulator or what is the need for modulation. Now let us see about the need for modulation. First requirement is that reducing the size of antenna. Modulation is done to reduce the size of antenna. For faithful transmission of a signal, the height of the antenna should be 1 by 4th of a square. That is, height of the antenna.
lambda from the ground should be is equal to lambda by 4. But we know that lambda is equal to velocity by frequency. And for wireless communication, we are using electromagnetic waves, which is having uh, uh, velocity as velocity of light. So we can substitute for velocity as c. C is a velocity of light, c by f. So height of the antenna will be, we are substituting for lambda c by c by 4f. This is the height of the antenna. Now let us consider an example. If frequency is equal to 15 kilohertz, we have to transmit a signal of 15 kilohertz. Then the height of the antenna will be c by 4f, which is c is 3 into 10 raise to 8 divided by 15 kilohertz. 4 into 15 into 10 raise to 3, which is 3 into 10 raise to 5 divided by 60. So it is 5 kilometer. It is not possible to have a hand in of height for 5 kilometer. So we are doing the process of modulation. If we are modulating this field 50 kilohertz, if we are feeding this 50 kilohertz signal to a modulator, and the frequency is raised to 1 megahertz, then let us calculate if the frequency is 1 megahertz, then the height of antenna uh, that could, uh, that is able to transmit this 1 megahertz signal. So the height will be is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by 4 into f, 4 into 1 into 10 raised to 6, which is 3 by 4 is 4.75 into 10 raised to 2, that is 75 meters. This is practically achieved. So by modulation, modulating, we are able to reduce the size of antenna from 5 kilometer to 75 meter. So the first necessity is reduce the antenna height. Modulation helps to reduce the antenna height. Next is multiplexing. So modulation uh, allows multiplexing, that is transmitting multiple number of signals through the same channel at the same time. Without modulation, multiple signals cannot be transmitted at the same time through the same channel. But by using the technique of modulation, multiplexing is possible. And in the case of multiplexing, uh, the antenna height is determined by uh, the signal with the lowest frequency. Uh, there may be many signals which are multiplexed and transmitted through the same channel and the signal that is having the lowest frequency is considered and its wavelength and the height of the antenna will be lambda by 4 of that signal, wavelength 1 by 4 of the wavelength of the signal with lowest frequency. Now let us see some, property, uh, some properties about uh, Fourier transform and uh, how it will be useful when we are going to study about amplitude modulation. Now we can see about Fourier transform and some of its properties. First, we can see what is meant by Fourier transform. It is a mathematical tool to find the frequencies contained by given time domain signal. So, in communication, we are using Fourier transform to, con to find the frequencies contained in a given time domain signal. Uh, the if x of t is a time varying signal, then its Fourier transform is given by x of f. And mathematically, x of f is equal to minus infinity to, to infinity, integrating the signal x of t, x of t, e raised to minus j 2 pi f t dt. Suppose we are, uh, uh, we are trying to transmit a rectangular signal. When now we are uh, thinking about a signal to transmit, the first thing that comes to our mind is a rectangular signal. If you are trying to uh, transmit a rectangle of parts, then if you are taking its Fourier transform, the frequency contained in it is. You can do it by using uh, the Fourier transform. Fourier transform is given by minus infinity to infinity. Here, uh, the time period varies from minus tau by 2 to tau by 2. X of t is, here the value of x of t is a, amplitude is a, e raised to minus a 2 by ft dt. On integrating this, and solving, you will get that sin at by pi at, which is, a, which is the equation of a single pulse. So, on uh, when a rectangular pulse is performed for your transform, we are obtaining a single pulse. And 
uh, in the same pulse, most of the energy or signal strength is concentrated in the main lobe and it uh, decreases as uh, the sync goes to both plus infinity and minus infinity. Now we can see about signal bandwidth, channel bandwidth and how the signal should be selected in order to transmit through the channel without uh, much loss. So first let us see what is meant by channel signal bandwidth. Uh, in the previous example we have seen that if you are taking a rectangle pulse or taking the Fourier transform there are infinite frequencies and the highest frequency if you are considering only the positive side the highest frequency uh, signal bandwidth is usually highest positive frequency minus lowest positive, positive frequency highest positive frequency is plus infinity and the lowest positive frequency is zero if you are considering the uh, signal highest frequency is infinity and lowest frequency is it tends to be zero so in case of a rectangular pulse the uh, signal bandwidth is infinity but when we are considering the case of channel bandwidth it is a range of frequencies which channel allows to pass without any distortion. Channel bandwidth is the range of frequencies that us pass through a channel without any distortion. If you are considering the case of a coaxial cable, it's an example for a channel. And coaxial cable transmits frequencies from 0 to 600 megahertz. So the bandwidth of the coaxial cable is the maximum frequency. That can be transmitted through this cable. Bandwidth is 600 megahertz. So, for uh, a uh, faithful transmission, channel bandwidth should always be greater than or equal to signal bandwidth. If you are considering the case of a pipe through which water is flowing. Channel bandwidth is actually the capacity of the pipe and the water which flows through this pipe is called is the signal bandwidth. If you are trying to uh, with much pressure we are trying to pass more water then the channel may then the pipe may break. So it is always a channel bandwidth should be or the size of the pipe should be more than the amount of water we are trying to get. Now I think you are clear with what is meant by channel bandwidth and signal bandwidth. So channel bandwidth should always be greater than or equal to signal bandwidth. How can we make this infinite signal bandwidth to pass through this channel? Only there are two possibilities. Either to convert the channel bandwidth to infinite or to reduce or limit the signal bandwidth. Channel bandwidth, uh, it is not easy to make the channel bandwidth in infinite. It depends on the material we are using. Uh, the cable, coaxial cable or optical fiber cable or like that. So this is not practically achieved. So the only thing we can do is to limit the signal bandwidth. And the process of Limiting the signal bandwidth is known as band limit. We can see about that next. Now let us see about band limiting process. Band limiting process is a process of limiting the bandwidth of the signal from infinity to some finite value. We are achieving that by passing the signal to a low pass rate. We have seen that in case of sync pulse, most of the frequency is concentrated in the main lobe. Almost 95 to 99 percentage of the signal strength is concentrated on this main lobe. So, by passing this through a low pass filter, the lower frequencies are uh, filtered. So, we will get a band limited signal and on passing this, this uh, signal to a channel uh, whose bandwidth is more than this, then there will be there will not be much distortion so band limiting process helps to transmit a 
a signal to a channel efficiently.